All right. I just had a lot of Hawaiian barbecue, so I'm a little full. Wow. From where? <laughs> you just had it. Dude, I don't know the name of it. It's like Hawaiian barbecue. It's like literally the restaurant name. Really? Yeah, I think so. Oh. It's like yeah. L and L L Hawaiian Hawaiian barbecue. You're talking about L and L? No, this one's just Hawaiian barbecue. I swear. Oh. Huh. It's it, it's like a little like hole in the wall place. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah, yeah it's good. You know. <laughs> just full, man. I'm just full. It's just like rice and rice and meat, yeah. basically, and hot sauce. So yeah, how are you guys doing? All right, chilling. Yeah. Dude, we the fire on Tuesday or Monday was crazy. How close was that to you? Like, we woke up and the whole apartment was like smoky. Um, outside was like. Here, I have pictures. Damn. I I have a picture. Um, it's not not it's not the best though. But this is there. <laughs> see it? <laughs> you can kind of uh, see. Yeah, it looks it like, like fog. Is that, yeah. is that fire? Is that smoke? Yeah, that's all smoke. Yeah. Dang. So it's just super smoky, and then, um, yeah, we left. I was like. I was like, get your go bag, get your go bag. <laughs> we can survive for five days. Grab Where'd the vitamins go? and the beans. I was like, grab your stuff, like you're never coming back here again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we went to we went to Michaela's dad's place, mm-hmm. and uh, and we just stayed there. I just stayed there for the day with the dog because Michaela was down in like Ladera Ranch, so she wasn't affected by it. It was just like super smoky for us up here. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, that was pretty intense. Yeah, it's sketchy. You wake up with all the smoke, like. Dude, yeah. Fires are sketch. Yeah. Because you're like, what if they just like blow into this like ravine down here and everything yeah. catches on fire? Yeah. And it um, happens so fast. Dude, they seriously we so it was like, they said fifty acres at seven. And then, like at eleven, it was like I want to say like ten thousand acres, something like that. Jeez. It was some some crazy jump, or like five thousand, and then like at noon it was ten thousand, something like that. But it was like, yeah, and I was I was sketched. I went home from work and I was like, I was like, I gotta be with my dog, because <laughs> like <laughs> I didn't want like the house to get caught on fire, and then like I couldn't get to the or like the place get caught on fire around, and then I couldn't get to the house, you know. <laughs> Like what if yeah. what if the freeway exit got caught on fire? <laughs> Better go run and take the side streets, get your dog. Yeah, if you're freaking my water bottle. <laughs> uh, y'all ready to start? Let's do it. Um I'm let me pull up in the Slack page real quick. Um <clears throat> Slack page Sean? No. Drop. I mean, I didn't look after the first time just because I was I was watching my lecture. Dropped. I guess like if you don't go on it enough, like it it just like takes you off of the. Because usually it like shows up. Like if I go to Slack, it'll pop up on my workspaces, but it's like not coming up anymore. It's weird. Because it says three people up top. Yeah. <gasps> I invited you, and then yeah, well, that's what I was. That's what I was asking. Like, what? How did you invite me? Uh, through this thing, because like, you're there under like one of these people. Like when I invited you, it just so what do you do? Like I was just like, um, here. I clicked add people right under yeah. In the middle so, of the page, there's three. It says out description. Oh, oh yeah, right here. Well, what's your email? Figure it. Maybe it doesn't send it to me because I'm already on there. Wait, well, what's, the, what's the email? Well, that's not. I don't want people spamming my. I email. just I just typed in Sean. And <laughs> you just typed in Sean. Oh, I guess that yeah. works. Like if my email comes up, we can worry about it later. I don't need it, right? 
We could yeah, argue yeah. That later. <clears throat> okay, so um, <clears throat> let's spend like a minute, uh, go over like kind of the overview of what's like what the steps of this book are, and then we can kind of like you know um, cut portions out if we don't think that they're helpful. Uh, one thing that we're doing right now is we're doing like the canvas brainstorm. So that's looking at um, that one canvas where we had it with the four different questions and it said like, is this a painkiller? Is this like a game changer? Um, what's the actual problem? And then what, how do you want to fix the solution? And then we brainstorm based off that initial idea. So that's what each canvas is. Um, canvas three is, uh, I want to say, Hold on, let me pull that up real quick. <clears throat> so canvas three is based off of this idealist. Canvas three is using creating a platform to connect people across the country uh, and build communities with farms, families, businesses, um, basically like interconnect the US using a platform um, but like having it be less uh, less internet based and more like walking to people's farms living on people's farms that kind of idea behind it so that was canvas three um, and then we did this last time canvas four on canvas three four and five okay so that was three um, okay, so four is basically creating like an organization talking about ideas for tomorrow. So like, I guess, bringing brand new ideas to our current problems and brainstorming those and then selling or kind of just like bringing up information for those specific ideas. Canvas five would be to build at home electronic devices or smart home devices um, to monitor like sustainable use. So like trash can, water, waste, all that stuff. And then a canvas six would be to make a smart budget tracker, um, which has like supplier information based off of it. So you can tell where your products are coming from. And then after the canvases, we then brainstorm uh, the end user. So I, I wrote uh, canvas three, four, five. Uh, I guess I missed one. But I think what I was thinking at the time was this idea, even though it sounds cool, I don't know if we want to spend time on it. It doesn't seem like interesting to me. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Where are you guys? There you go. <clears throat> you keep breaking up, Gavin. I didn't catch really? the last part. Yeah. Internet's bad. You don't seem interested in this one? Well, so this one yeah. uh, is good. Now. This one, you can hear me? Yeah. It says, my computer says it's my internet connection is unstable. Mm. Oh, man. man. Okay. Um, yeah, I feel like this, go ahead and just stop me if I'm breaking up too many times. Um, I feel like this one right here, um, it, it just, I don't know. I don't know if I had the passion and interest into it. I wanted to bring it up to you guys, see if you were interested in it still. I mean, for me, it was more of like, just like the brainstorm. We were just dumping ideas. Yeah, not something that I'm particularly passionate about for at all. Yeah, Sean, you good yeah. with getting rid of it? Okay. I mean, I guess <laughs> I'm not like passionate about it, but I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I think it's a good idea too. I just I don't want to spend my time doing it. Yeah. It's almost like being a quality engineer, and like I'm like nah, you know, mm -hmm. makes sense. <clears throat> um, okay. Someone's got to do it, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> Get off. No. Actually, dude, she does the freaking bone on the couch. It's not good. Um, um, so basically where that puts us, you, do you guys like these ideas as well? Or do you guys want to take any of these out? Um, so report on ideas of tomorrow. Is that just like a news source, basically? Like, we're just like a news source? I think it would be more of like uh, a brainstorming philosophical news source so like you're saying what is a what is the issue now what are all these people saying are the solutions and let's come up with a new solution let's really mm -hmm. think about this in a new way 
I feel like I would have a hard time with that. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I like this one. Um, I am more interested in building something more substantial. Like this seems yeah. like a cool YouTube channel, but this seems like a cool business. And this seems like a cool business, like a big thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so that would move us up. Um, okay. So we'll just do three and four canvas. Uh, so that's this kind of platform thing. And then four is the electronic devices. This one I feel like has potential, but I think we would really have to dig deep to brainstorm for that one. Um, I, I'm up to keep it on the plate though. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I like connecting with like farms and families and stuff. Like, I don't know. I feel like we'd have to have like experience doing like kind of hitchhiking and backpacking and all that to like understand how to actually set it up. But I guess, yeah. I don't know. And, and so that's kind of a good introduction into like the rest of the, the, the weeks. So what it looks like the schedule is, is that um, it would be like three and four canvas. And then uh, the week after that, it would be taking all the ideas that we've had and then figuring out like the end users, um, pros and cons, that kind of stuff. And then deciding on which idea we're going to uh, research. And then at that point, um, you have like a team review and primary market research plan developing. And so that's kind of like everybody checks in, like, are we still good for um, our passion for this product? Are we interested in this business or um, are we kind of? Hey. <laughs> One second, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man the dog life that's what happens dude <laughs> dude she just broke the remote oh yeah she was like yeah. chewing on it who left it on the couch you <laughs> oh he's breaking up again oh uh, she left it on the couch she left the freaking remote control on the couch yes the person she's chewed up can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I know I can. Yeah, we missed everything you said. She 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 uh, left the remote control on the couch. My girlfriend did. The and... fuck I have a name. <laughs> <laughs> they know my, my name. My roommate left. <laughs> <laughs> the people on the internet don't. I don't want to give away your name. Your What's identity. Up, yeah, you did. And now we have, now we have, we can't freaking market ourselves to kids anymore. Okay, this was supposed to be a learning thing for everybody. What the fuck? <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, November nineteenth was going to be like team review. Are we all on board, or do we want to add extra people? Do we see this being a product where it would be beneficial to have somebody that like knows coding stuff, maybe like a farmer? You know, I don't know. So that's what happens at that point. And then the, the three weeks after that, that's where we kind of like go off on our own for homework stuff where we have to like interview the people that would buy this. So end users and say, Hey, are you, what do you really want? And don't even tell them our product and just say, what, what do you want? And then be like, at the end be like, what if this something does this? What if this does this? What do you think about that? It's a whole plan that goes with that. I, I'm thinking we give us a, two or three weeks on that and then kind of keep coming back and kind of discuss present uh, what we how many learned. people are you envisioning that we interview um total like for oh well, i guess per week one to three okay that's not bad. yeah yeah i think that would be good it's just it's i think it's more about picking the right person 
Do you hear her? What's that, what's that noise? <laughs> <laughs> oh god! And then, <laughs> and then, and then after that, then you do like your beachhead market. So that's like um, you picked an idea, and then you're really developing which beachhead, which category you're going for, and then you're going in deeper into like what is that market like. Um, more end user stuff and then also like how much does that market have in price and can you actually make a business off of it so that's what it looks like um yeah so i think uh this timeline it, this works out uh for me and we eliminated one of the canvas days uh if i think we can eliminate days here with the primary market research plan maybe speed that up if we can finish the interviews sooner I don't know. Um, and then here we could, I don't know, we could meet on a, another day, but I think, I think we're fine the way we are now. Meet this week, next week, and then the week after that we decide. Are we doing anything today? Yeah, we're going to do the Canvas 3. That's not today's day. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> this dude. <laughs> All right, let's get started. <laughs> okay canvas three are you guys all good with that that sound good yeah sweet um so canvas three it's creating a platform to connect backpacking hitchhikers across the country with farms families and businesses to do work and travel across the u.s so what problem are we trying to solve or opportunity are we looking to capitalize on uh, I'm just going to start this one off. So what I was thinking with this was that we have no real uh, information news source and journalist source anymore. Um, I feel like Fox News is fucked up. CNN is fucked up. There's not a lot of like good what's actually happening in the world. And so we would create a platform of people that would walk across the United States and live with people that offer up their homes to them in lieu of them having some type of like blog or video blog where they would talk about what they experienced, who they talked to that day. So we could get a real update on how the counties and regions are doing of the United States. But that seems a little utopic. So, you know, how do, how do we, I guess, what is the big problem there? Um, it's a little too much. <clears throat> Just like a way to connect people. Okay. Um, I mean, that's basically it, right? Yeah, and I guess when we say connect people, it makes me think of like, what's the difference between that and like a Facebook type thing? Um, and and so I guess then, uh -huh. I guess like Facebook is like less personal for some things. Like if you had people that are actually giving their stories, like interacting with other people, it might seem more authentic, I guess, rather than just like reposting articles and things like that. Right. So it also takes some effort, yeah. right? Like, yeah. like you actually have to go and meet people as opposed to just spamming a Facebook group with articles about things that you would think are true or whatever. Yeah. So less um, regurgitation of the same stuff and like more discovery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this, this like what problem we're trying to solve. I was thinking of this like in interview with that I saw with like an Airbnb guy and he was saying, he was saying when he walked into the Airbnb company, they had so many different like goals. They wanted to like have cheaper, um, sources for people to live at cheaper places. They wanted to like connect people around the world. They want to do this. And he was like, you need to pick one thing. And he said, he said like, okay, um, Airbnb is about providing you a home anywhere. That was their, that was their problem they're trying to solve. And they really focused on that and they created that niche and then it kind of blew up. 
So I'm thinking we have to answer that same question here like that. Do you want to get more detailed with that answer or? Yeah, I think so. Like almost like create family members nationally. Or where? Something like that. I like that. Yeah. So that is basically connecting. So in the same way that like you are somewhat acquainted to your neighbors, sometimes um, you would be somewhat acquainted to the people all around the world or all around your nation somewhat. And that's so with the neighbor idea, what do you do if you're a neighbor? You give them tools. Um, you, I don't know, on a more extreme case or rare case, you would drive them somewhere. If something happened, they need to be somewhere that their car broke down or something. Yeah. It's, it's this weird um, relationship where like they're more than a friend, but less than family. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you live by them and you're constantly, you, you know more than their friends because you see them, you know, every day or, you know, walk into their car or walking around in their boxes in the backyard, like random stuff like that, that you wouldn't have with friends, but less so than family because family, like you tell personal things to. So it's more like, it's more like you see everything that they're about or you hear everything that they're about, but you don't share. Like, it's like intimacy without explicitly sharing that on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. So how would this like help you be a so, neighbor with somebody like on the other uh, side of the country? Also, you could say um, like you could, you could say, okay, what does a neighbor do? Just brainstorm. And, and so this is the point, right? Where you say, um, so we're kind of getting into the ideas that we'd brainstorm. And so mm -hmm. one of these would be like, create a tool sharing platform. So like someone's got a lawnmower, you say, Hey, can I borrow that? Boop. And maybe a thing that you could explicitly like put in there is like, you're not going to do it for any price. Mm -hmm. You know? I think, um, so let's go down this. So urgency, um, painkiller or game changer? Open new game market. Changer. Yeah, I could see it becoming a open new market. Because it's opening up the market, say I have like a tool sharing thing and then that same platform could open up into like ride sharing. It could open up into like, need somebody to talk to, that kind of stuff. Uh, why us? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. <laughs> uh, um today I got I got upset at this lady at Target and she's like cause she cut me in line. And so I feel like if I had a neighbor national program that I was part of, it would ease my stress in the community that I'm in because I feel like the community in Orange County is not so close to each other. So it would give me an artificial feeling that we are closer and so I would act like we are closer. Um, Belongingness. 
I guess this one. Or, yeah, belongingness, community, same thing. Why does that make you, is that like making you uniquely qualified? I see the, uh, I see the need for it because I think it would make, mm, I guess that would be more passion, huh? Yeah. Or like ideas, I don't know. Yeah, 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 I get you. I can't. Oh, that's a hard question to answer. Yeah. Um, Maybe it makes us uniquely qualified because we are experiencing it, right? Like we are yeah. living in an area where we don't necessarily feel part of the community. That could be for a number of reasons. And we want to be able to fix the problem because we've personally have experienced it. Mm -hmm. Well, why are, so yeah, I think that goes back to passion. I guess why us is more like, um, what, are our, what are our connections that would help us solve this problem better? And yeah, I, I, think, I think we're both saying the same thing in that, it, like you said, we're we're equipped to deal with this because we've experienced it um and yeah i guess we're the we're the gauge of this of whether it's good or bad um, the Are you talking about for the passion belonging ness n e s s or less? Ness. Oh, okay. Belonging less. What does that even mean? I know. I was like, what <laughs> are you talking about? That's some like ethereal poetry stuff. I feel belonging less. We've experienced the problem we're trying to solve. Um, I think another thing that makes us uniquely qualified is fraternity uh, issues. Um, and I, I guess just the philosophy and the thinking behind that. Like, I think we've learned a lot more than we think we have, like where you focus on the people that really matter you can't bring everybody up, but you, you try to bring the, the top achievers up so that it can you know, rise all boats. I don't know. I just feel like we can pull from that because it's, it's a community. Yeah. Um, no issues. Um, I think, Steve, you have um, alumni relations help because that's what you're about, bringing people closer together. I think um, Sean and I can break down like a, a technical process um, and make like a platform work, even if we don't have the most experience in it. So like, I, I it's product development. Yeah, I feel like both of you would be more of like um, the technical aspect of it. Yeah. And then for me, like more of the business aspect of it, or maybe the business relations or community engagement sort of aspect to it. I think so too. Yeah. So, so for more of passions, um, why do we care so much? Um, I think, I think the U.S. is in need. And I think globally we're in need for um, some type of solution for this. Uh, and uh, especially US culture. Mm. 
Yeah. What else you guys got? I mean, tying into that, it's like important to be part of a community, like have that feeling of community. Yeah. That's like for us, for our family, a lot of stuff. All right, so so let's uh, let's brainstorm using this like what statement. I think that was good. So I like create better. Okay, so. Brainstorm, uh, create nave. Okay. Um, industry for this uh, tooling. So it would be like be more men based. Um, middle aged. Yeah. Well, what is middle age? Twenty. 20 is not middle age, my friend. Dude, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like people that would use this is like 20 to like 60. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. 60. Um, people that like working with their hands. Like uh, handyman, kind of? Yeah. Um, so maybe like someone, a car enthusiast because they like working on, oh, yeah. right? Like DIY people. Yeah. DIY. Oh, that's a good one. Say engineers. I can see a lot of engineers taking this. Um, probably dads, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, People with houses, homeowners. Yeah. Um, dude, this is it right here. Million bucks, dude. I, I wonder if they have something like this. They have to, like a tool share. Mm. Call, it the, call it the tool shed. <laughs> That'd be cool. I've never heard of anything like it. So. Yeah. Yeah, I know that AutoZone lends out tools. But I don't. Something like this right here. Oh. Hey, hey, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of URL is that? Trash. Trash, dude. Trash. Um, homeowners. Mm. I wonder if you could use it for like a business type thing. Business owners? Yeah. Like trades people? Yeah. I was thinking like like the business maintenance people. Yeah. Even just like, yeah, I, I guess it'd be more cost beneficial for like an AC person to have their own tooling. Yeah. Okay. So what would they use it for? Um, what do we say? Getting tools they don't have? Yeah. Have. Or finding people that know how to use some of the tools that they need. Like if you don't know how to set up a plumbing you know, you kind of need someone to know how to work all those tools. I wonder if you could even open it up to like, like gardening stuff, like a like almost yeah. like almost like a, a Craigslist type thing for like specific housework. Like instead of going through like Yelp, you just say like, "Hey, here's this random guy. 
I'm going to pay a hundred bucks and he's going to like fix the plumbing instead of a contractor. I don't know. I feel like services makes it a little more complicated. Yeah. So it'd be like, yeah, so it'd be like, um, I think, I think it'd be cool. Like have somebody come and mow your lawn or like do well, some gardening for you. There's task rabbit for that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what else? Yeah, I think that's it. Go with that. Um, yeah. Okay. Other things. I'm thinking food. Uh, families. So how would this? How would that work? Food. Like. Like giving people food. Yeah, so it'd be like, yeah, it would be like you have, I don't know, a tree and you can only eat as much as, you know, half of what the tree produces and then you got all that extra stuff that you do with it. Yeah. Oh. It could be anyone, I guess, targeting like at, at need families. Okay, you're thinking community service. Gotcha. Yeah. Then we can even get rid of that. Okay, cool. Is that the right word, at need? Or like at the right phrase? In yeah. need families? I don't know, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Be careful what you say on the internet. <laughs> Shit. Special needs families? Dude, <laughs> I was gonna say a funny story, but I can't say it. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> no, it's not that bad. Um, okay, so at age families, um, and then your end user would be that. Uh, well, so would your end user be that? Because who's spending the money? I guess I was thinking more like nobody was spending the money. It was just like, there's this, like you said, with the tree or something that has a bunch of apples that they can't eat. They just like put it out there that they have a bunch of apples that they can't, they can't eat and people come and take them. Like community service sort of thing, I guess. Mm-hmm. But I guess you can open it up to like selling jams and stuff like that, like a um, what? flea market or whatever it's called. Yeah, well, I think like going along that line of like community service, you would switch that around and say, what would they use it for? And, and say like feeding yeah. at need families. And then the end user here would be um, agricultural businesses. Um, and did I spell it wrong? Agriculture. <laughs> <laughs> agricultural business and um and like rural homes um, yeah with with plants yeah yeah and so like you're basically making the product making the platform for these people so that they can give back to these people so your Mm -hmm. end user is those people um It could also be um, people in cities that have fruit trees and connecting them with local food banks. Okay. That would be like the use it for, right? I think so. Um, So you're saying people in the cities growing food and then giving them to food banks? Yeah. Okay. City folk? Thanks. Okay. 
Okay, you guys wanna go next? I'm gonna take a sip of water. They just tell me what to type sure. for the next one. I think if we're trying to do something along the lines of of trading skills, we could even do like for for another industry for like food or or culinary skills, like teaching people how to cook when they know how to cook things from like Peru, you know, or or Indian food, and and they can do classes almost and teaching people how to cook authentic um, food from you know, a different culture. Uh, interest, uh, or what's it called, hobbyist? Like that? Yeah. 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 Um, new uh, methods um, from the indigenous, the multicultural. Well, okay, that's that's a cool idea because like you're basically saying you got all these people around me that have a wealth of different cultural knowledge and you want to learn about them. That's what the U.S. is all about, right? And so if we kind of keep going on that idea, like how many other ways, like could you, could you create a whole platform about saying like, hey, my neighbors I, are diverse and I'm only this color you know using that metaphor they're they're a rainbow color i'm just like yellow how can i learn get more of what they're all about um so that would be yeah food uh dance. skills was that like dancing you know? yeah yeah exactly all the different stuff hobbies so you could do skills um I guess just, well, so like on this, when I, when I put skills and then the end user being like a hobbyist, it makes me feel like um, that's no different than what we see in all our current platforms where it's like you log into the site and what are your interests? You're going to get direct towards here. But when we talked about that in the past, it was kind of like we want people to discover new interests. So rather than someone being a specific hobbyist, we want an end user that is an explorer of the world. You know, so, um, so they would use it to explore um, the people and their interests in the area, maybe. So I'm thinking people that want to do that are either the young or the old. That's kind of my thoughts on that. I guess you could get the people in the middle as well. I think, I think you're right. I think the people who are younger tend to have more curiosity and the people who are older have, tend to have more time. The people in the middle are kind of dealing with advancing the careers and family. I, I think those two those two opposites really would work the best. Okay. And something like that. Yeah. Right, yeah. And well, so the problem that I, I found with sites like that, like I, I've looked at, um, I've looked at, I forget there was one, this one site that was basically like, what is your hobby, blah, blah. blah. And I was like, man, like, I don't, I don't know what my interests are. And so it was kind of like, it's almost like, you know, I, for me in middle school, we had like the option either band, choir, or explore. And it's almost like creating an explore program where you can do a lot of different things. Specific interests. I feel like that is like that's a really interesting niche. Like there's a lot of people out there that don't know what they're interested in 
and they haven't tried a lot of different things. And I definitely see myself in that category. And I think a lot of people feel like they're in that category. So if we can learn to like solve that problem where you can just say like, Hey, like it's okay that you have no interest. Here's a bunch of different things that you can do. And then you get tied in with people that want to go hang gliding, people that want to go skydiving, people that want to go surfing. And they just say, Hey, come along. That'd be dope. I agree. That would be yeah. pretty cool. Cause like, I don't know if you guys have seen the Airbnb experiences, but like you're, you're paying somebody to learn about those things, which is cool. But like, what if you could just have it like a neighbor saying like, Hey, I have an extra surfboard, you know? So I don't know. It'd be hard to do, but good. I think. Yeah. Uh, people without specific interests. What else do you guys think? I think people who are like our lifelong learners, people who are always really interested in picking something else up, not necessarily mastering the craft, but just like dipping their toe, getting to know what it's about and, mm -hmm. and always picking up new skills. Yeah. Yeah. So close. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to spell curious. That's why I don't use it in sentences. <laughs> <laughs> I spelled it like this and I was like, no. I think that's right, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> yeah, we're so dumb. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm cool with that. Sounds like a good one. Um, how much time we got? 10 minutes. Uh, freaking okay. Uh, the, the backpacking thing, let's say industry would be media. Um, what's it called? Information okay. journalism. End user, dude. What if you had a freaking like newspaper that was just a bunch of backpackers? They call it backpack. I don't know. <laughs> like, are they advertising themselves or something? Like, well, y yeah. You basically, you just get hundreds of people walking across the United States, writing about the stories that they experienced, like, oh, my day was this, my day was that. And, and, and yeah. so the end user is like those people or is it the people that are like reading those stories? Maybe the people reading them, I think, which wouldn't be a lot of money, I don't think, I don't know. Yeah, end users, um, readers of uh, people's lives. Like if you make it super personal, you can have it like maybe anonymous or just not even make it anonymous and just have people document about like their walk and like what they're thinking about when they're walking, um, what they saw, their observations. I think people who are interested in climate change would like to know about that because these backpackers will be traveling and will be able to f compare what it is now to what it used to be. Uh, yeah, I can see uh, environmentalists would like this. Mm -hmm. um, I think you could also talk about journals in terms of like, um, how much somebody spends to go across the country. Like, can you do it on a cheap budget? So it'd be like the shoestring people. It just sounds like something like really cool too, like a business like that, which would allow us to 
like just see the United States and then get paid for it. Like that, that sounds like a cool dream. I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, I don't know how the uh, how the revenue aspect of that would work. It would have I mean, to be. Like it, yeah, it's just like ad based, just like everything else. You just have people posting stories, and you got ads sitting there too. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it would be a lot of. Um, it would be a lot of like ad based off of that. Uh, I wonder if you could even. You know, how people like to watch. Like people have like webcams and stuff like that of just them in their house. Like people have that all the time. Like, what if you take this and say, "Hey, if you're going to work for this company, um, between this hour and this hour, you need to have these glasses on, which are going to stream everything that you do." And so, uh, you're basically creating a streaming site of like saying, like, all these people walking across the United States. Like, what are they seeing at this moment? Are they encountering bad people? Are they encountering good people? Mm. Like just eyes, you create eyes across the United States. It would be like a membership model, right? Sort of like um, you subscribe to a newspaper and you pay a monthly fee. Yeah. I think that's how the revenue would be generated. And then that would be interesting too, because I like say, you, say you do $5 a month and then you do like the first month for free and then you can have it to like where you get onto a, a web page where like, you have all these different boxes and it's like all these different people across the United States. And you're just like, whoa, that person's in the car with this person talking to them, hitchhiking, this person's doing this. And you can see some really positive things and you can also see some really negative things. And it would be a real indicator of how the country is doing. That's, that's the thing that I'm thinking. Yeah. Cause they always say like, you know, our, our phones are now, the thing that broadcasts what we see to the whole world. Uh, and it's like, if you can, if you can record the George Floyd thing, then it's, it's, it's proof that it actually happened, but nobody's recording all the positive things. So if you put these eyes across the United States, like what positive things are you going to see? What's yeah. that going to influence? It, it's basically breaking new in a utopic sense. Like you could basically break new ground on what, journalism really is i'm just imagining like government spying just skyrockets after that what what is it like if if we just have like people walking around with like cameras all the time like government spying is just gonna like shoot up they're gonna have eyes everywhere yeah for sure yeah which i mean that would honestly probably sell that business more because it has like <laughs> controversy behind it. Yeah. And then it'd be like, what is this? What is that? And then people would like, oh, buy into it. It'd be cool if like the Google Glasses was still a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you'd be able to use something like that. I don't think those are a thing anymore. I think they, went, the I think they got rid of them. Snapchat glasses. Is oh, yeah. Snapchat still a thing? <laughs> I deleted it a couple of years ago, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, so this one would be what they use it for. Um, basically, live monitoring of the nation's events. It's like a first person account of like their experiences. Yeah. Okay. Um, any more ideas we got here? I guess, would you consider like travel, like travel industry, mm -hmm. being able to connect people to like with the whole hitchhiking thing or backpacking to like connect them with um, 
like homes to stay in. Yeah, so it'd be like a couch sharing thing. Yeah. Or even share like tidbits and give like pointers from a local's perspective as opposed to like go to this really famous place. It'd be like this is more of the locals only type of, of review. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, finding local spots. I guess more, I would say more like quiet, friendly people instead of like the people that want to go there and party. I was, yeah, more, more friendly to that. Uh, and family oriented. Uh, so I'd say 20 to 50. Okay. Um, get the, the couch surfing one. Um, so, what's the difference between couch surfing and what this would be? Couch surfing is kind of that idea where I think so. The whole idea with couch surfing is that. Oh, okay. So the idea with couch surfing is it, you get you guys heard, heard of that website? No, no. Oh God, I feel like a hippie now. So this, this <laughs> is just like there's <laughs> so there's like this website. It's called couch surfing, and you say, "Hey, I'm gonna be in this area," and then people say, "Okay, we got this house. You can just sleep on the couch of our house." And it's kind of weird. It's like super close, you know. Like if you're if you're like a single, like female traveling, it's kind of dangerous. I can see it being. And so like, I guess you could do a travel industry like this where you create neighbors nationally, but have a different idea because the whole idea behind couch surfing is like you let them into your home and that has a different level of int intimacy around it. Meanwhile, like Steve was talking about what a neighbor is and it's like, you see everything, but they don't need to tell you. And so what if, you create a platform for backpackers to live in tents outside of people's houses or um, live in tents in people's backyards. Like not couch surfing, like lawn surfing, <laughs> you know? It'd be interesting. I like lawn surfing, yeah. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be dope, you just like in for free, just be like, hey, one person, you gotta get out in one day. And instead of based off of like how much time you need, basically say like, you're only allowed to stay two nights here. You're only allowed to stay a week here. And that way it says like, okay, one day and out, two days and out. You can have the filters kind of set up differently. Hmm. Uh, end users would want to be people that would. It's like outdoorsy want. people, I guess. Yeah. Um, so your, is your end user, the people giving up their lawn or the people that want to be on the lawn, who would be paying for it? The people on the lawn, That's the way I would yeah. see it, like you would be paying for the database or the platform to reach out to lawn owners. Mm -hmm. And then, and then would, would the people with the lawns i feel like yeah this one's kind of tricky you almost have to play both sides because you have to give a benefit to the people with the lawns maybe like service base or something like that what do you mean by that like i, I want to make sure that the people giving up their lawn get their own benefit from it whether it's like, hey, 
I'll take out the trash for you or like I'll walk I'll take care of your dog um, I don't know I mean there, there could there could be a like, monetary compensation yeah okay. so they can they can get like 75 percent of what they're paying and then we'd get the as the platform would get 25 percent or whatever mm-hmm So yeah, end user, I'm just going to kind of split that homeowners and the backpackers. Mm -hmm. um, I think both would be travel oriented. For you to be able to offer up your home, you'd want to be in that same situation, I think. Um, age would be, I would say like younger crowd to yeah. 40, maybe at the most. Um, single and couples. Think. Okay. Dope. That was good. Good sesh. Yeah. That was good. Uh, next time we're talking about this one or this one? We're talking about? I think it was that one. 39? So we're not going to talk about this one. Is that right? That's what we said. Yeah, because I thought you wanted to do something more like substantial. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So home devices for a sustainable mindset. Okay. Sweet. So we'll brainstorm that next week. Cool. Hell yeah. See. We'll see you guys. All right. See you guys. Peace. Bye. Bye.